in the Clive Barker podcast. Longtime fans Ryan and Jose interview guests, bring you the news, take deep dives into Barker related stuff. In episode 454, we break out our new 4K copies of Clive Barker's Underworld, also known as Transmutations, and talk about this new release plus listener feedback. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and advocate of his art, but Don's unique and inspiring paintings are for sale, and over 50% of the proceeds go to the Arts and Medicine program at the Texas Children's Cancer Center. There's even a paver in Washington, D.C., representing Celebrate Imagination. We're thrilled that this worthy cause is sponsoring our podcast again this year, and we hope that you'll consider looking over the Etsy shop to buy one of his original paintings or books. Follow the link in the show notes or click the side banner, and let's see what's new with Don Bertram today. Take a look at the new painting Stained Glass Tulip on Don Bertram's Facebook page. Also, please check out his videos. Uh, um, one of them goes over his original Clive Barker painting, The Bug Brothers, and the other is his intro to the 35th anniversary screening of Hellraiser. Uh, that was a charity screening for uh, Celebrate Imagination. So, yeah, please check those both out. I've got a link to the blog post that has both videos. I couldn't, uh, Facebook wouldn't allow me to share that on Facebook for some reason. So, uh, those are there. They're on our, our blog, so check them out. Uh, there's also some paintings on his Etsy shop to check out Mother and Child 2, The Stargazer, The Folk Singer, The Pearl, The Portal, uh, Top of the World, and don't forget about his books, The Chimney Sweeps Tale and Celebrate Imagination. Hey, uh, welcome. This is episode 454, uh, Underworld in 4K. Cause we're, today we're just going to kind of deep dive into the, the new Kino Lorber 4K release of Underworld. And I, I used to always call it Transmutations, but I've noticed on this release, they call the, the UK version Underworld mm-hmm. and they call the US extended one Transmutations. Which That's right. Transmutations, they just call the 103 minute alternate cut yeah today we're going to talk a little bit about this this has been an interesting uh release i remember when we found out somewhere on instagram or facebook something about george pavlou was mentioning something about he was working on a blu-ray release for a 4k restored version mm-hmm. and yeah it finally came out by Kino orber right i've got some reservations about this release but uh i guess we'll get to that really late watching this i watched this movie twice i watched once nice with the 4k underworld cut and i watched a second time with the audio commentary on with george pavlou and stephen thrower who's so not what... the stephen thrower from coil right this is a different yeah, this this guy wrote a book. I saw that. I thought, oh, that's interesting. And then it's like, no, it's a different guy. To be honest with you, I mean, it was the audio commentary was not super exciting. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. That's that's what I thought exactly the same thing last night. I was like, this this guy is not very enthusiastic. He doesn't remember a lot of things about the movie. And at some point, it seemed a little bit like Stephen Trower was kind of trying to help him out by adding more stuff to talk about in the conversation. Yeah. Comparing yeah, the movie so it, to other things. And in some ways, Stephen Thrower knew more about the movie than he, than uh, than George Pavlou did. Yeah. Well, that sometimes is not surprising, right? I mean, sometimes yeah. fans have watched the movie a lot more times than a mm. director ever watched it himself. So we, we sometimes people get to see things that uh, – the director never thought of. I thought it was a little underwhelming. Yeah, there was uh, interesting stuff at the beginning when he talks about how he met Clive and, you know, he got to see some of the galleys of the Books of Blood stories before they got published. You know, they decided to come up with an original story for a movie instead of licensing one of the Books of Blood. So that was a better path to production to yeah. just come up with a, a original script. And so I think Clive did like something like a 10-page treatment for the director. And then he was shopping around for people to produce it. Yeah, and, and I think another interesting thing about the audio commentary was hearing George Pavlou's justification for uh, getting someone to rewrite Clive Barker's script. I didn't... Uh, Kaplan, right? Uh, the guy who... Uh... It's also co-credited with this screen. I think his name is James Kaplan or something like yeah. that. Yeah. 
Yeah, and and honestly, some of the things that they said they changed were kind of um, they should have. I I I think they should have just given it a try. I mean, what they did, yeah. that what they did was make it try to make it more commercial, but with a super low budget. But they tried to make it more like an action movie. Right. So the producers wanted this to be a 15 certificate. So they wanted this to be for PG 15. Right. And they yeah, were like, well, like we're trying PG-13 to do a horror movie. US. Yeah. I mean, we don't have a script to go by, but uh, mm-hmm. you you go by what they're talking about. And it does seem like they had to start production without having a complete script because there was yeah. a tax um tax thing that they were doing so the movie had to be done by i think it was october and so they had to start the production on the movie without having the complete script and i get i i guess you know clive probably did that first 10 page treatment and he probably expanded a little bit on that but i'm guessing that they didn't really have a complete production ready script uh when they started the movie no they and said it, he, he he did make a first draft yeah. And, yeah, but then they hired someone else to rewrite it after that. Yeah, he said that the story wasn't flowing very well in uh, one of yeah. the club's drafts, so they brought in Kaplan to uh, work on that a little bit. And I guess also to do some changes because, for example, if this movie has depictions of drug use, then it immediately gets an 18 certificate. So, Which so they mu- should have, that someone should have told them that from the start. Why do they work so hard to try to get the... 15 rating and when it was never going to work it was yeah Yeah. i guess they were just trying to appease the producers or something um ultimately they have to come up with a movie that the uh the people with the money are happy with but yeah so apparently they cut Mm -hmm. a lot of stuff and and they they toned down a lot of stuff yeah but they were already going to get an 18 certificate because this deals with that drug right the uh the white man Right, right. And anything to do with drugs, even if it's like a fantasy drug that makes dreams reality, it's still a drug that still makes it, you know, an 18 rating instead of a 15 rating. And right. one thing, though, I'm really impressed with the picture and sound quality. And and, uh, and in fact, it makes the it makes the um, the the soundtrack by Fruer really stand out. Yeah, yeah. It's. A lot of grain. I mean, that's one of the things that I thought was fantastic. I had no idea that they had access to to this because for the longest time, you know, the only thing we could see was that I think it was a laser disc yeah, transfer and VHS, and and I guess there was a DVD, but maybe only in the UK. Yeah. Well, the thing is, they did a new 4K restoration from the original camera negative, and this is presented in a Dolby Vision HDR presentation in this Ultra HD Blu-ray. Yeah. So, yeah, you get to see a lot of the grain. You get to see a lot of the color. Honestly, I forgot. I haven't seen this movie a lot of times, but I'd forgotten that our hero, (laughs) his hair has red streaks in the back. And I I used (laughs) to watch this in such a bad quality copy that I never noticed yeah, that he's got those red streaks in his hair. And, and so. I, I don't think I ever noticed. You know, when Red Dog gets shot, and they, mm-hmm. and they they open up his shirt, and he's got that weird sort of spidery thing with uh that's like I guess one of his organs. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember ever seeing that before, <laughs> or else I ever un, you know getting a clear picture of it. Right. You probably just saw something muddy and like yeah o- overexposed. Uh, VHS master, laser disc master kind of thing. It does seem like they've they're focusing on recreating the theatrical experience by doing, you know, by making it 4K just for the uh, the theat- original theatrical cut, and then restoring it in its two channel stereo. Yeah, yeah. Which um, is cool. I, I I mean, we're we're lucky to get anything this good for for Underworld. Well, yeah, of but, course. I mean. It was a little disappointing that the the extended transmutations version was on the Blu-ray, you know, the 1080p Blu-ray disc. Right. But this is I didn't watch that because we've seen that cut before, so I ended up just watching the um, Underworld cut. Yeah. In so 4K. It was a lot of fun. I mean, I yeah. I'd forgotten how much fun the movie is, even though. Yeah. Although I mean, it's it not the second time with the audio commentary, I fell asleep a few times in that. During that, <laughs> I could see that. Yeah, it's it's a very underwhelming commentary. I mean, I'm glad that it it is here. I I just wonder 
I was looking around for podcasts that were talking about this movie before we did this, and I was trying to figure out how this movie tracks with the uh, you know audiences out there. There's either one of two groups: either people who saw this movie completely disconnected from being Clive Barker script uh, original idea. And they just saw it on TV or they saw it when they were younger and they thought it was really creepy and weird. And then, you know, years later, they find out it's a Clyde Barker film or written by Clyde Barker. Or there are people like us who are, you know, Clyde Barker fans and they found their way to this mo movie eventually because we started going back chronologically through everything we could find about Clyde Barker. And so we ended up watching this. For people like us, I mean, this release is just for completists, right? I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a thing that you're like, well, I'm glad that this movie finally has a, a proper release, even though mm -hmm. I understand Clive might not be <laughs> the most interested party in this release because he doesn't feel like they uh, did justice to his story. But at least we get a chance to preserve this and have this, um, you know, in a, a format that we can now enjoy and uh, see more detail of. But it, it's funny when it's a movie that, someone watched without knowing about Clive Barker at the time. And when they were making it, Clive, Books of Blood hadn't even been published yet when they when right. They started. Right. But there's a lot of elements here that'll kind of find their echoes in, in Nightbreed, right? That would happen a few years later. Oh, yeah. These kind of Morlocks, these kind of uh, outcasts from society or th this kind of like They're lost tribe. Living underground, yeah. That lives underground, and that's this case. It's uh, they're others because they are uh, drug addicts. They're addicted yeah. to this drug that, well, they never really explain what exactly the drug does, but it's supposed it's supposed to like manifest their dreams into yeah. their flesh once they've taken it enough times. Yeah, manifest your dreams, and but but how, what does that even mean? Like, if someone wants yeah. to fly, would they manifest wings eventually, or is that? Uh, well, uh, that's just a little. One of the best special features uh, to me was in the still gallery, seeing Clive Barker's uh, sketches that were meant that's to, right. you know, to to show what this movie would be like. And yeah. some of those sketches showed things that they didn't even try to do. You know, like um, there was a guy who had for one of his eyes, he had another face. Oh, and that spider thing was taking up a whole guy's like back in one of the pictures. That's right. The, those are great uh, Sumi ink drawings that Clive had yeah. made for this, apparently. One guy had spider legs coming out of his head. Those pictures were very night breed, you know. And the, another With, character had uh, knives instead of eyes coming out of right, his face. Yeah. Yeah. And one of those that you mentioned earlier, the one that has a, a, a whole face where another eye should be, mm -hmm. that does have echoes of another makeup that ends up in the night breed. The only thing I think I mentioned in the previous episode was that I thought that his designs were just a little vague sometimes uh, to translate into an actual, like, makeup. Yeah. But, but it's cool that it, they added They did that. it better in Nightbreed. They were a lot truer to his, you know, sketches and stuff Yeah, in yeah. Nightbreed than they were in, in Underworld, for sure. There was a little bit of archival behind-the-scenes footage uh, in one of the discs mm -hmm. as well. I think that might yeah, be the Barry Norman. Be yeah, exactly. Like a, a kind of a TV special about Yeah, that. which looks like it was just kind of ripped out of YouTube and put on this Blu-ray because of the quality yeah. of that uh, footage is, is, is very YouTube quality. Let's just yeah. call it that. And so and Barry Norman was irritating to listen to. He's like, I hope that acne clears up, you know, to the <laughs> one of the actresses. Like, what a stupid joke. Oh, man. Yeah, but they have a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff as well. Uh, they have uh, yeah. Denholm Elliott talks a lot about Dr. Savory and about the drug and all that stuff mm -hmm. and what happens to him. Uh, we see people with makeup getting applied, and, uh, and, and there's that image gallery of still storyboards and makeup tests. The, yeah. the storyboards depict the final sequence, right, when uh, Nicole yeah. meets up with Savory, Except and she's they, like— they... They, except it, they show it with the the needles, you know that were it, that whole section was cut. Yeah, that's that's another that's another thing that happened, kind of like the surgeon scene in the laser disc for Hellraiser yeah. two. It's like the one that came out when Transmutations came out, and and they saw yeah. like in the back of the box, you would see a cut scene from Savory turning into. You know, a flayed man with needles coming out of his of the inside of his body. But then in the yeah. movie, they just he just kind of picks at his face a while and then falls down and melts away and burns up into yeah. nothing. So obviously there was some 
some choices there to save money and in, in production by uh, not having that full sequence of effects, uh, which would have been yeah. pretty challenging to make. And yeah, and would have pre- it was interesting because yeah. we've never seen any special features about this movie at all to see some behind the scenes stuff, and they they even show like a behind the scenes footage of the scene where the mutant guy is is has been shot and he's in the chair and he's like oh come closer to the gangster with the gas mask and then he yeah. stabs him and yeah. gets shot and and so they show all that from a b- behind the scenes perspective you know without the sound effects and the special effects that's right, and stuff that's right. which was kind of cool the movie itself i mean what can i say i mean we we did a commentary track about this movie once it was episode number 391 yeah, yeah i put it in the show notes there awesome so we did that uh, commentary track on episode 391, which I do recommend you guys go listen to because we definitely yeah. had a lot, a lot fresher ideas about the movie back then, and we talk a lot about it. And, uh, and that was for the trivia. extended version, uh, the Transmutations U.S. extended version of it. Yeah, that's like which was it like I was watching the laserdisc at the time, so we had to make everybody pause while I turned over the laserdisc. <laughs> Good times. You put a, a show note here, which I think we need to put the correct uh, link on, but it was George Pavlou was planning a sequel. And I was looking at this in our show notes and I was like, wait, what? And then I remembered, oh, yeah, it was that that oh. April Fool's joke, right, that uh, we did where I said that it was an April Fool's joke because that's when I did the return of Nicole, right? Transmutations 2. Anything can be recreated again. And we... We made a uh, April Fools 2020, and then we uh, we said oh, now yeah. that uh, the 4K restored version is coming out, we're gonna he's gonna reach out to actors and find producers for a sequel for Transmutations. Oh. So I even made a fake poster and everything. That was funny. It's not my favorite movie by any stretch of the imagination, and I really, I mean, if you have a special spot on your heart for this movie because you saw it back in the day. And uh, then, yeah, more power to you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's It's got some real gold veins shining throughout this whole movie, especially yeah. now in 4K. You get to see those makeup designs uh, in even better quality. And, you know, even though it's not it's no image animation stuff, but, uh, yeah, you know. But it's it's pretty well done, and well, uh, and th- their emphasis on the special effects was how short amount of time they had to get them done. That's right. That's right. Yeah. The the commentary track is a little underwhelming. Um, although it's it's like you said, it's fun to listen to Georges Pavlou talk a little bit about the movie and mm-hmm. give us a little bit of insight. There's a few anecdotes here and there. Right. Uh, and we've read plenty of interviews with Clive Barker, you know, getting his perspective on this movie. So it was interesting to see someone from the other side explaining their perspective on it. In the still galleries, though, I was a little confused because at some point it seemed like they were just adding screenshots of the movie, of the yeah, 4K version. Yeah, I didn't like that. I'm like, hey, this is filler. Stop doing that. It's, I, know, yeah. I was like, okay, guys, this is a little bit of filler. But uh, mm-hmm. all in all, I mean, for what for what this movie is and for what they 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 made with it at Kino Lorber, what a great uh, release. Uh, yeah. comes. Mine came with the two re- two discs, of course, the 4K and the 1080. It's got a black plastic box. It comes with a little bit of like a, a slip case. And, and uh, I, I and love the new one. it even has a trailer for Rawhead Rex on it, which was strange, right? Why wasn't there a trailer for, for this movie? Yeah. And, and, and uh, it's a reversible cover as well. I hear you. There should have been a, a trailer. This oh, movie. Yeah, there's the, the new cover and there's the reversible cover on the other side that says Transmutations. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's you know what I like the new cover better. Okay, yeah, 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 I get it. I'm actually flipping it up right now. Yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. So one side says Underworld, the other side says Transmutations. Yeah. There you go. So that takes care of your first uh, observation yeah. about this uh, DVD. Well, and, and and I always used to call this call the movie transmutations because it made it easier to di- differentiate between the underworld movie with like is oh it yeah and sale Kate with Beckinsale. the vampires That's and right. the werewolves i mean That's when right. you search for underworld and movie you're going to get 800 links about that and you have to oh, go yeah. down a few pages before you find anything about this movie 
That's right. I see that you've added something here to show notes as well, which talks about the difference between the different versions. Um, right. Yeah. Because I, I honestly, you know, it's like with Lord of Illusions, I know the differences really well. Cause it, and it, this is just like that because it's 11 minutes difference. But yeah. with this, the, the, the trims and stuff are there. It's not anything exciting. Right. I mean, you, when you read through it, it's like, oh, somebody waves their arms or, you know, there's an extra scene of somebody meeting in a bar. I don't know. It's yeah. it's all forgettable stuff. That's right. It's it it seems most of this stuff is almost like second unit stuff. Like uh for example, here's one. Uh US version, Roy goes towards the hatch and opens it. Thirty one point fifty six seconds. So that's really doesn't add a lot to the movie. No. You know, and if somebody were to press me for the what got cut out in in uh, underworld versus transmutations or what got added in transmutations i'm not really sure i mean i could look this up but i you know it doesn't i don't think it is it's very impactful to the story right and i think that there's not really a lot of extra material that they had that mm -hmm. they could add to this new release i mean i think this is pretty much whatever they could scrounge up is what no, exists is, for the movie this is probably the best release anybody could do yeah. I mean they could have done more audio commentaries I guess with a different people but but you know I think this is a near perfect you know release for this. I could yeah, ask. Yeah. I appreciate a lot that even though they didn't have the material to do everything in 4K they still managed to do a lot of it and we get this presentation yeah. with the HDR and everything. So if you have a system that can take advantage of that ultra HD then uh you're going to you're going to see everything. I'm happy to be able to put this on my shelf with the other smaller disc movies because right now it just exists with the laser discs. And, and I also put in links to, to buy it on Kino Lorber and buy it on Amazon. I, I was thinking about how we do so many different types of episodes and a lot of other podcasts that you listen to do one, you know, they do the same thing every episode. That got me thinking, I wonder, you know, how do how do our listeners feel about that? You know, do you... Do you like that we do, you know, an interview one time, we cover something another time, we do audio commentaries another on a different episode and and um you know our D&D &D game and stuff. And so I did a I did uh polls and asked people what they thought. And so I guess we can look at that now. Uh so on the Facebook poll, interviews were like the number one thing that people listen to. And next would be news. And then coverage of releases, and then audio commentaries, and then our D and D game would be last. And then, like, mm -hmm. well, I think one person said they listen to all types of episodes. Sure, thank you. Yeah, and then uh, in our listeners group, I think we just had a comment from Dustin Vanderpool. Oh yeah, so Dustin! Shout out to Dustin. Yeah, he said, uh, I think at this point. A lot of us click on because we've grown attached to the hosts. We came for Barker and stay for you guys. So uh, he says, but I love the commentaries and I really love the comic deep dives. Those have multiple, have had multiple listens. So thank you, Dustin. Really appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, and then the Twitter poll from what I saw last night, we'll check on it again, but it was... Uh, Pretty different. Yeah. Okay. So news and reviews on from our Twitter poll, news and reviews got the most votes. Then interviews and commentaries are tied and nothing on our D and D game. But this is a lot smaller pool of uh of people answering compared to the Facebook one. So it's not as accurate, I think. Sh sh sure, sure. Yeah. And then I asked on Discord. This reply came from Kamui003 on Discord. After we got done recording, he said, I actually think it's a good thing that you guys have a variety of episode types. It gives you a good range of topics to cover. Look at it like this. There might not always be a new release or news to cover every time you record an episode, so having commentaries and the D&D &D game help with maintaining a consistent schedule. So thanks for that one. Well, it looks like the uh, the results were kind of like what we were expecting. I mean, at this yeah, point... Yeah, but it just made me think, you know, are, are people like tuning out or not listening to certain episodes? When I listen to podcasts, I listen to every episode that they do, you know, whoever it right. is that I'm listening to. And if it's not some... If they do stuff that I don't like, I don't listen to them at all. 
I'm, you know, maybe I'm different from other people. And so I think probably a lot of other people sort of pick and choose which episodes they want to listen to based on I mean, I the guess topic is. it depends on what the topic is, right? Like, for yeah. example, I, I listen to this uh, podcast about gaming, but if I haven't played the game, I'm probably not going to listen to that episode because I wouldn't oh. understand what they're talking about, the review of the game or the mechanic mm-hmm. of the game. That wouldn't make sense yeah. to me. So usually... But that's just, you know, a matter of, you know, personal choice, I guess. It's well, like, and with our audio commentaries, like, we tell people, hey, you should go watch this first before you listen to this. Oh, yeah, for sure. If people have never seen the movie. And w- sometimes we've done them for really rare stuff. So it's like how many people actually listen to Barn us doing an audio commentary for Barn of the Blood Llama when that movie is so hard to get in the first place? That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be just for the people who have that. So that's that's yeah. part of our audience. So Very there's definitely a niche thing. People. Yeah. yeah. So I just thought that was kind of an interesting topic I wanted to get people's feedback on. So, you know, if you didn't participate in any of those and you have ideas or you want to tell us what you think, uh, let us know. Sure. And you can yeah, even uh, you can even do it as a voicemail on the click the little link on the side of the website and and you can even make it a voicemail. That's right on our blog. Commentary tracks are usually the the ones that I, I feel are more fun and involve the least amount of editing for you because we're just well, really we're talking. We're running about... out of stuff to do with those. Luckily, with the A to Z of horror, we can do ones that are. We've mostly been able to do ones that are more accessible. And so people get a chance to, yeah, I can go watch, you know, Evil Dead 2. I mean, everybody's got that. Versus yeah, I mean, like we could. Barn of the Blood re- Llama, which nobody has. Nobody has, right? I mean, they can get it from Gibby or whatever his name was. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've been talking about revisiting things and stuff like that. And I'm like, I, I would like to revisit things like things that we did at the beginning that now we have a completely different insight on. Yeah. And, uh, the only problem is, how do we make it interesting or bring new stuff to the table so that we're not just quoting what we said years before, right? Well, if we don't listen to what we said before, I don't know. What? That's right. Right. So, yeah, I wouldn't go listen to what I said about a, a story before recording it. I would guess I would try to read it again and see it with different eyes and try to come up with my own ideas about it. But there's still things that we haven't even touched. I mean, there's a lot of theater plays we haven't done yet, for example. Well, I, um, I think just a few, maybe like just three. A few. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course we're we're waiting for um Phil and Sarah to make more of the playbooks. And somebody had posted on Reddit, you know, they're like, Hey, it's been four years since there's been any new playbooks from Phil and Sarah. And I thought, is that right? You know, but four years ago was 2020, and maybe that is true. Yeah, they they've been so. busy making like Dark World and and the releases that come in the the you know new Hellraiser releases and the new Nightbreed sure. K release from um yeah with that book yeah the, so I, I mean it's understandable that they've you know that those kind of went by the wayside because those are probably not don't sell as much as something that gets you know, packaged in with a uh, a new 4K Blu-ray. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But they're, f- you know, for us hardcore fans, you know, we really love and appreciate those playbooks. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm waiting for that Secret Life of, Life of Cartoons to come out at some oh, point yeah. so so we can talk oh, about man. it because it's, be awesome. it's a funny, uh, funny play and uh, did pretty good. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so I don't know. I mean – we can revisit books of blood stories. We can, and we could also do more horror commentaries. We could do our own A through Z of horror or go back to the book and see what other movies they recommend. Cause some chapters recommend more than one, or we can find out more stuff that uh, Clive has mentioned as being a good movie or, or, you know, movies that mean a lot to Clive. Well, there, there's movies that uh, Clive has mentioned that have been very important for him, for example. And, uh, We could talk about some of those other movies that he spoke about, not just the ones that he mentions in uh, A through Z of Horror. And then there will probably be new releases at some point, too, to talk about. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm still waiting for Deep Hill to come out. That's that's one thing that we are we are all expecting. And And, uh, the poetry book, right? The Presence presence of His Breath. Presence of His Breath, yeah. 
when those things come out, we'll have more things to talk about. But it is true that for now, I feel like things are getting into a little bit of a slump, especially as Clive uh, winds down his uh, convention appearances as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's supposed to ramp up his production of, of uh, work, you know, and he talked yeah. about how he was in the middle of 23 projects. Maybe there will be all of a sudden a deluge of, of uh, things to talk about. So give us more feedback. Tell us what yeah. you'd like to see from us in the future and uh, what yeah. kind of what kind of uh, things you'd like us to talk about. Maybe even obscure stuff that uh, might mean a lot to you, but we've never covered before in the podcast. I mean, we'd love to get into that. Well, we want to give a shout out. Patreon. Uh, please join our Patreon if you haven't. If you can join our Patreon. We want to give a shout out to our Patreon uh, subscribers, uh, David Anderson, Eric Van de Holt, uh, Daniel Elvin, and our returning sponsor, Don Bertram, Celebrate Imagination. Thank you. Uh, you guys are helping keep us going, and we really yep. appreciate it. Keeping the lights on at uh, yeah. at the, the Barker cast. Of course, the best way to support this podcast is through our Patreon at patreon.com slash barkercast589. Our subscribers will get exclusive access to content not available anywhere else, like our Collector's Corner video series, Rare Barker videos, and early behind-the-scenes stuff. Plus, backers in the $10 tier will also be able to choose an episode topic, and we might mail you something once in a while, depending on your location. Coming soon, more stuff about uh, a project that Ed Martinez has been working on with uh, Kyle Hart. And, uh, you know, coming up next, we'll have more Jericho Squad 77 returning to see if we can find and destroy the heart of Apex Uh We'll get more A through Z commentaries, continuing our series of Z for Zombies. We're going to do Army of Darkness. Yay. Yeah. That's going to be cool. Um, yeah. Night, Nightbreed soundtrack discussion, which uh, has been shipped to me as I say this. I've gotten the Entrada Nightbreed soundtrack to CD on its way to me. So by the time yeah. I get it, we'll listen to it and we will uh, make an episode about it. Mm -hmm. And we'll also talk a little bit more about our Phantasmagoria Hellraiser interview book that uh, has a lot of stuff in there that we, that's a lot of good stuff for um, Hellraiser fans. We brought yeah. this up a little bit uh, during our Peter Atkins episode uh, last time. The only time. reason we haven't had a dedicated episode to it yet is because it's big and I just haven't we haven't read it all already yet. Right, right. Yeah. And there's a lot of interesting things in here, like uh, like, like a, a, a never filmed tr Hellraiser treatment, Hellfire, for example. You know, it's uh, yeah. stuff that uh, we've never even knew about it. Uh, we'll have more Boom Hellraiser, the Dark Watch comics discussion, and more Hellraiser Quartet of Torment coverage, which we might end up getting Peter Atkins to join us to talk a little bit more about Hellraiser uh, 3 and 4. It's Another episode just like this one, but about Rawhead Rex in 4K. Hey, that means I have to buy the 4K version now. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> well, I suppose. I mean, I don't know if it's exactly the same as the HD version, you know, but uh, I, in 4K. Since I bought the uh, the 4K Ultra HD uh, Sony player, now I'm, I feel like I got bit by the 4K bug. Yeah, and I'm... I I, I, it does make them feel a little more special and less bargain bin, I think. The, well, true, the 4K true. releases. True. So, yeah, this underworld uh, or transmutations, I recommend it if you're a completist yeah. and uh, you'll get all this stuff that, uh, a, a, as small as it is, uh, there's still a nice amount of stuff here in extras. And uh, you get to listen to George Pavlou, which is always a great way to go into sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, and and I would also say that it makes this movie a lot more watchable. And and our friend uh, David Anderson had mentioned that too that he actually likes the movie now, and he's watched it like three times uh, versus before where he didn't. You know, he kept it in a drawer where he didn't ever look at it. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. All right. So that was Kino Cult number five, Transmutations. Yeah, and this podcast having no beginning will have no end. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker Podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim, Inc.
This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our Discord server. The best way to support us is to buy our book, The BarkerCast Interviews, Occupy Midian, available in hardcover on Amazon and ebook on Amazon and Apple Books. Fundraiser 10 is all about Patreon this year. Become a patron to get access to exclusive stuff, pick an episode topic, and maybe even get cool stuff in the mail. You can also buy a t-shirt on our Tee Public store. Go to tpublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Leave a message for us using the SpeakPipe link on our blog. Opening and ending music generously provided by Ray Norrish. Thanks for listening.